Looking at the massive silhouette of the black vulture, it is hard to believe that the species is on the brink of extinction. Just a century ago, the black vulture was widespread throughout Mediterranean Europe, with dense populations in the eastern and western areas. It occupied the entire Iberian Peninsula, North Africa, and the Balearic Islands. Today, a few couples scattered in some parts of Eastern Europe, in the mountains of the west, center, and south of the Iberian Peninsula, and four or six pairs in the Balearic Islands, is all that remains of the powerful black vulture. The preferred habitat of the winged scavenger is the Mediterranean forest. In it, these birds found abundant deer carcasses in all the sclerophyllous and caucifolia forests. In the very rich population of rabbits, in the wild boars, in the fallow deer, and in other phytophages, the necessary proteins to survive. In the middle of February, pairs of black vultures in their last strongholds devote themselves to mating. The male and female, often bothered by a third person, who is usually their son from the previous year, fly in parallel. In parallel. They overlap, confusing their silhouettes in the purest sky. The mating flights are often followed by skirmishes through which the male tries to expel the previous year's young or another competing male from its territory. The male of the pair tries by all means to stimulate the female to lower the nest. The construction is generally located in the crown of an oak, a cork oak, sometimes a pine or a juniper. Laying takes place in the first days of March and consists of a single egg. While the male watches from above and prevents a competitor from entering its fiefdom. The female, for 52 or 54 days, is almost uninterruptedly engaged in incubation. Black vultures were once abundant throughout the Mediterranean ecosystem. But giants under human pressure are fragile. The big ones become extinct before the small ones. During the days of early spring, a multitude of animals reproduce in the last redoubts of the Mediterranean forest. In some way, it reflects the same conditions of the vulture's ancestral homeland. But some species that are also on the verge of ruin live here, such as the imperial eagle. During the first years of their life, imperial eagles have beautiful light colors.
They are the true queens of the Sclerophyllus forest, the homeland of the black vulture. They fly silently under or over the treetops. They display the most amazing techniques for hunting in horizontal, oblique, or vertical flight. Between 40 to 50 pairs of imperial eagles remain in the Iberian Peninsula, also the last in Europe. The usual prey of imperial eagles is the rabbit, which with the catastrophe of myxomatosis has brutally declined throughout the Mediterranean area. The last imperial eagles build their nests in the treetops. They dominate the last seas of greenery in the Mediterranean stronghold. The chicks covered in white down are fed profusely. Adult imperial eagles have completely different tones than juveniles. Its shoulders are stained white with beautiful light beige colored fur. But the habitat of the black vulture is extremely rich in species of birds of prey. The short-toed eagle draws its silhouette in the sky, while the chick, about to leave the nest, stretches out on the branch of a cork oak. The mother comes punctually to upholster the nest with fresh branches that will maintain the monochromatism of the construction. Also close to the nest of the short-toed eagle and the black vulture, there is another endangered species, the black stork, with a few pairs spread across the Iberian Peninsula. The half-grown chicks stretch out on the large platform in the thick fork of a cork oak. Black storks are excellent flyers, and like the common ones, they spend the winter in Africa. They feed their chicks by fishing especially nearby rivers and lakes. At the last crossroads and in the clearings of the Mediterranean forest, snakes abound. One of the largest, the striped snake, can exceptionally reach two meters in length. 
The large snakes of the Mediterranean forest have a specific enemy, the short-toed eagle. From the first days of April until September, these large birds of prey, which also winter in Africa, meticulously explore the terrain and hunt for snakes. The strong Mediterranean snakes defend themselves hard against the attack of the short-toed eagles, but they display a practically invincible technique. They first stun their prey with strong fin strikes, looking for the head to crush it with a sure peck. Afterwards, the ophidian's movements are already clumsy and practically directionless. They are the last moves before being laboriously swallowed by the winged hunter. Because the images in this sequence seem to show us that it is more difficult for the short-toed eagle to swallow its long prey than to capture and kill them. Certainly the movements of the snakes have not yet ceased when the short-toed eagles gobble them up. To swallow the large snake and pile it up in their crops, the short-toed eagles adopt strange postures. Imploring postures as if they were carrying out an old prayer. The beautiful short-toed eagles are also becoming increasingly rare in Europe. At one time, they were abundant in all sclerophyll forests, in all the countries bordering the Mediterranean, and even deepened in the nations of Middle Europe. Today there are few pairs that build their nests in pine and oak forests. But the young black vulture has already been born. When it's born, it weighs 100 to 150 grams. A figure that is minimal when compared to the 12 kilos that the bird will reach after four months of staying in the nest. Patiently, the mother covers the chick. If it is sunny, it gives it shade. If it is cold, it lies on it to shelter it. Practically all day and all night, the black vulture remains in the nest. 
but in those days, in the vulture forest, life hatches. The doe, followed by the already grown young one, looks for fresh pastures. And the little fawns feed on the tight udders of the hinds. The mufflin, which also became extinct throughout the continent, being reduced to the island of Corsica and later being reincorporated into the European fauna, leads its offspring to search for tender pastures. And in the most rugged part of the mountain range that dominates the vulture forest, there where man very rarely goes, the wolf still hides. In its secret den, the young wolves wait playfully for the arrival of their mother, like all young canids do. Cautiously, the wolf enters the safe and secret refuge of its little ones. Another species that will also disappear with the black-tailed magpie if appropriate measures are not taken. But the closest and often the most annoying neighbors of the black vultures are the long-tailed vultures these prosperous and small corvids have a curious distribution area. They live in China, Japan, and in the Iberian Peninsula. The male, stimulated by the female, copiously feeds its chicks. It will carefully clean the feces from the nest in order to avoid contamination and maintain the monochromatism of the nest. The little black vultures are fed four times a day by their parents. To stimulate them, they peck the tip and side of their parents' beaks. These regurgitate semi-digested meat. Currently, one of the big problems for black vultures is their source of nutrition. They do not find enough food to feed themselves and to support their little ones. At 15 days old, vulture chicks change their down. They replace the primitive white with a more grayish one that they will keep for up to 35 or 40 days. since from childhood they have a naked neck like their parents. In ancient prehistoric times, black vultures must have depended on wolves for food. Being large prospectors of the terrain, they could monitor the hunts of wild canids. As soon as they took down prey, 
The vultures would be close to them to feed on the remains, as African vultures do today with lions. When the vulture occupied large areas of distribution in Europe, phytophages must have been very abundant, as were wolves. Among the first, mouflons with deer and young deer were surely their main source of nutrition. In this sequence of hunting of pack of wolves, we reconstructed in some way the primitive ecological conditions that must have prevailed in the world of the black vulture. On the high peaks, the pack of wolves slumber. Near the permanent fogs where neither oak nor pine grow, wolves watch over the valley. They wait for the punctual passage of the flocks of wild sheep. These animals must have been very easy prey for wolves. Perhaps their extinction throughout the continent was determined by the pressure of these canids. Profound strategists, tireless runners, the wolves always try to lead the flock of jesters towards gorges where the siege will prove invincible. The amazing jump of the mouflon tries to attract the attention of its congeners. In some way, it tells them that the terrible enemy is on to them. The game has begun, the game between the wolf and the mouflon. The game of life and death, and behind is the vulture.
For millennia, wolves must have provided black vultures with the necessary carrion to maintain their dense populations. At 45 or 50 days of age, the black vulture chick begins to cover itself with black feathers. After four or five years of successive molts, it will reach the final adult livery and reproductive capacity. Throughout its life, it will have some parts of its neck and face plucked and its head covered with sparse down. These bare, brightly colored areas are of great importance as stimuli in the social relationships of black vultures. Vultures do not stay alone in the nest for long. Their parents provide plant matter from time to time to cover the nest platform. These accumulations made up of grasses, green leaves, they somehow camouflage the whole thing together and must also provide coolness to the chicks that remain in the nest for so long. Stimulated by the little ones pecking, the mother returns a mass made up in this case not of food material, but of the indigestible remains that accumulate in the vulture's stomach. Ornithologists call these masses of indigestible matter pellets, which also form a good part of the nest cover. Black vultures, in addition to shade, protection, and food, provide another nutritional element, water. Without it, on the hot days of the Mediterranean summer, the chick could not live in the nest. The vultures are very ceremonious in their nests when their consort arrives. They do all sorts of genuflections and peck at the bare areas of the neck and face. The young vulture, perfectly protected by its elders, seems very safe. However, for years, young black vultures attracted the attention of collectors who stole them from their nests. Dozens and dozens of eggs were also extracted. Today, black vultures are protected by law throughout the Iberian Peninsula. And as far as we know, also in their nesting areas in Eastern Europe. But in the vulture forest, there lives another fascinating creature that is on the very brink of extinction the Mediterranean lynx. However, the crow is not the lynx's usual prey. It is the rabbit, which, having disappeared as a result of myxomatosis, has dragged many predators along with its fall, particularly the beautiful lynxes. 
The white tails that nest in the same tree as the black vulture have a habit of attacking it. Actually, the vulture stoically endures its pecks with infinite patience. Us nor ornithologists can explain why from time to time the great-tailed vultures enjoy attacking the patient black vulture. They give it a series of pecks on the back and if possible even on the head. The black vulture stands its bellicose neighbors as best as it can. They will abandon the area and the aggressiveness as soon as they finish breeding with the emancipation of their little ones. the white tails withdraw from the battlefield. As soon as the male of the pair returns accompanied by the young one from the previous year. We have been able to verify that the immature remains in its parent's territory. We have also been able to verify that sometimes they attack them with their claws in the air but that it addresses them by calling them as if it expecting some help, which is not at all considerate. Like an intruder in the territory where the black vultures raise their new offspring. It is not common for both parents to stay with the chick in the nest, they take up so much space that not even the wide platforms of the black vultures contain them comfortably. When chickens exceed two and a half or three months of age, they spend a lot of time alone. We have been able to verify throughout the sequences of the reproductive biology of the black vulture that this scavenger is perfectly adapted to the habitat it occupies. What have been the causes of the ruin of its population? We will try to explain them through some ecological schemes. In ancient times, the black vulture must have occupied the dome of a perfectly balanced ecological pyramid. At its base, known by ecologists as the producer's stratum, the holm, cork, gall oaks, and common oaks, other shrubs and grasses in the Mediterranean forest must have provided adequate food for the wild cytophages. These gave it up to predators, apex predators, and ghouls. But man caused drastic changes in the primitive zoological community. It replaced wild phytophages with domestic livestock. It practically eliminated predators and apex predators. The vulture became directly dependent on the human economy. But later, machinery replaced the beasts of work. Livestock is stabled, the environment changes dramatically. The vulture is doomed to death from hunger except in a few places where small communities of spontaneous fauna persist, where small primitive forests remain, where the vulture depends again on a super predator, in this case, man.
And in the same way that vultures watched over wolves in prehistoric times when they began their hunts, today, in some privileged corners of the Iberian Peninsula, black vultures fly over human hunters to feed on the remains of their prey. In some mountains of the Iberian Peninsula, hunting is frequent during autumn and winter. Then, the black vultures concentrate in the hunting areas and occasionally fly over the hunters. When helped by dogs, they try to kill the deer or the different herbivores that constitute their preferred animals. There is an astonishing parallel between the vulture, a ghoul, dependent on the wild super-predator, the wolf, and today's vulture, a parasite of the super-predator of our days, which is man. Once again, the vulture's prehistoric strategy is going to be put into action. Winged scavengers will keep watch over terrestrial hunters. The afternoon falls, the dog catcher claims its prize. And docilely, 
Domestic canids now abandon hunting to respond to their owner's command. But somewhere a piece must have been lost. Somewhere the vultures will have also found their trophy. Perhaps the remains, the viscera of men's trophies. The vultures share their feast with the magpies. These corvids, mobile, intelligent, and very visible, are very useful to vultures as explorers. Hierarchically, the vultures divide up the carrion, first eating the most powerful individuals, then the least gifted. Fights over the prey are frequent. Generally, they do not cause significant damage to the vultures. They are ritualized fights. In some regions of Spain, where livestock farming is no longer abundant, hunts are, however, frequent. Here again the vultures find the necessary carrion to feed on. There are just over 200 breeding pairs of black vultures left in the Iberian Peninsula. Maybe half a dozen in the Balearic Islands. All necessary measures must be put in place to save a species that once roamed all Mediterranean forest areas. We must not degrade the environment. We must build feeders for vultures to avoid their destruction at all costs. With the world of the vulture, Europe would lose its last wild redoubts, the purest, most primitive of its kind. <laughs>